Hi gorgeous, this is episode number 108 with the direct marketing titan Brian Kurtz. Hi, this is Brian Kurtz. You're listening to Heart Cells podcast with Christine Schlansky. I'm so super excited to have the conversation with Brian Kurtz today. He has been a successful serial direct marketer for over 40 years now. And his mission today is to be the bridge between the eternal truth of the direct response marketing and all that is considered state of the art direct response marketing today. He has just written a book that came out this year, Over Deliver, which he over delivers. We're gonna dive into that and especially into the message that marketing is not evil if you are doing it right. And before we dive in, make sure you subscribe to Heart Cells podcast, you leave a rating and a review to, you know, recommend it to a couple of your friends when you enjoy it and share the love for Heart Cells podcast. You find all the transcripts, show notes, resources we are talking about today at christineschlonsky.com under the podcast tab. So let's dive in into the episode with Brian Kurtz. Marketing is not evil and really have a good time and yeah, get some inspiration out of this one. Hi, Brian. Welcome to Heart Sales Podcast. I'm so happy to be here. I, I uh, The idea of heart selling and heart-centered entrepreneurs is something that I've spent a lot of time in my career on. So um, I have a lot to say about it, and I hope I can share a lot with you today. Oh, I'm quite sure. So welcome. <laughs> oh, thank you. Just, you know, we've been connected through a mutual friend, and I was so happy to learn. You spent so much, well, basically like all of your life in marketing. <laughs> yes. When did you know that marketing was your thing? You know, it, it, I always knew because I'm an extrovert and I always knew that, you know, selling and marketing was something that I thought I, I, I liked and I wanted to do. But then when I was in college, I was the film critic for my school newspaper and I started thinking, oh, you know what, maybe I'll just be a writer. And um, so when I got out of college, I looked looking for jobs in New York. I just went to uh, different companies that were publishers and asked for, you know, editorial jobs. It so happened that the job I got wasn't an editorial job. It was a job doing, you know, royalty rights for plays. And it wasn't anything related, but it was a publisher. And then I got this interview at Boardroom, uh, this, you know, kind of sleepy little uh, company that was growing and it was, it was run by an entrepreneur who was an incredible guy, Marty Elston. And when I got there, I wanted an editorial job, of course, you know, I wanted to write. And Marty said, and, and I, the job I got was in list management. Now, I didn't know what list management was. Um, I didn't know what a list broker, I thought a list broker worked on Wall Street. Um, but the idea of a list manager managing the, the names and addresses of all of your subscribers and book buyers, it's like, I didn't know what what, what this was, but it was a job that was better than my other job. So I took it and I, I started doing it and I excelled at it. And it was back to, you know, what was in me in the, at the beginning. And then about a year in, a job opened up on the editorial side, on the writing side at Boardroom. So I went to Marty and I said, hey, that job's available. I'd like to take it. I've always wanted an editorial job. And it was that, this was the turning point early in my career, I was like 24 years old. And Marty said to me, you know, you have a nose for marketing. And like when you're 24 and the president of the company says, you have a nose for marketing, stay where you are. It's hard to say, no, I want to go to the editorial side. So I didn't know, he knew. And I, I kind of knew it, but I didn't want to admit it. And then once I, then it was like, you know, I took off from there and I became the best list manager in, in the country. Um, and then I became the marketing director at Boardroom, vice president, executive vice president, and learned direct marketing from the ground up. And it was the best decision I ever made. So that's the, the, the quick, you know, snapshot story. But, you know, it, it, it definitely shows that, and if you don't know what, you know, what you, you kind of think what your aptitude is, but you don't know exactly 
and you, sometimes you need a little guidance. And one of the things that I that I've um, been very very uh, 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 dedicated to in my in my career is mentors. And so when I was 20 and 30 years old, all of my mentors were 60 and 70. And people used to make fun of me, you know, why do you hang out with the old people? I mean, I knew they all had the wisdom. I mean, they, they had the experience and the wisdom. And of course now, you know, too many of them are dead, but I, what I learned from them was so valuable. And I think that's a big key to where I am now. And hopefully, you know, when I, I'm, I'm 61, I'm hoping that, you know, there'll be some 20 year old or 30 year old that will remember me. Um, and that, that ties into, um, you know, remembering your mentors and remembering the people that got you there is just so important. Um, in fact, I don't know if you know the movie Coco. It's a, it's a Pixar film. Like a, it's a kind of a kid's film, but it's not a kid's film. And the movie is about um, Dia de Muertos, uh, which is a Mexican holiday where you honor your, honor the dead. And, but it's a celebration of the dead. And the movie basically says that someone who dies is not really dead until they're not remembered. Mm. And that's a very a re big reason why I wrote my book and why, you know, why I do this. You know, um, I think remembering your mentors, remembering your family, and it, it's while you're around, you have to keep remembering and then you pass it on to the next generation. And in marketing, it's the same thing, you know? these great marketers who taught me so much, their lessons are still really valuable. Um, you know, there's a lot of new marketing now that doesn't um, directly relate, but the fundamentals don't go away. And so yeah. it's, uh, yeah. The fundamentals is connection, right? It's it is. a human it is. talking to another human in different forms. It, you know, can be email, it can be Facebook Live today. Yes. Um, it's it's all about podcast. <laughs> yeah, podcast exactly. Yeah, yeah I, I just I just love what you said um, about mentors, and you know, for me that was quite a learning curve to to accept that I needed help, that I needed support, that I you know figuring out that it's not a weakness to ask for help was uh, well, I would say a milestone in my life. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's it's an interesting thing. You know, I, I say uh, I did a video that was something like, um, you don't choose your mentors, your mentors choose you. Mm. And what I mean by that is, you know, the best mentors I ever had were people that I wanted them to be my mentor or I wanted them to teach me stuff, but I wasn't just going to ask them. You know, I think it's too easy to say, oh, you be my mentor. And, and I get that a lot now from people. And, you know, I'm not saying you have to earn it, but you got to do something to show that you're, mm, I hate to use the word, but worthy of, of that. Because, you know, when you're an experienced person, you've got so much on your plate and there's so much going on that you don't know, you know, who you're going to be able to help. And so I, I think, you know, when I, 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 I had an interesting thing with my, I have a, a weekly blog and I, I, um, I was talking about a great copywriter and I wanted, to, and I had it, all of his, his work and I was going to, I said, I really want to do a, pro, a, um, a product that is the work of, of Jim Rutz, who's the copywriter. And three copywriters on my list wrote back to me and said, uh, you know, they were Jim Rutz fans. And they said, I want to work on that product. You know, no payment, no nothing, nothing in return. And, you know, I have to tell you that the product just is almost finished now. And those three copywriters, I got they're they're like my mentees for life. You know, they they stepped up and, and it wasn't because they did me a favor. It was bigger than that. They wanted and talk about heart cells, they took their heart and put it into something like that, that meant the world to me. And, mm. but it happens all the time, you know, when people out of nowhere, you know, can I help you with this? Can I do this for you? And, you know, sometimes they're not, it's not, it's not applicable, but your mentors, you, your mentors choose you if you play it right. And I'll tell you, when I, when I looked for mentors like Dick Benson, who was a, a direct mail guru and 
Gene Schwartz, who was a copywriting guru. What I did was I, I knew I was really good in the list management area and they had companies that were ordering lists. And I basically stepped up and said, do you want some help? I know the lists really well. And I was able to check on their lists. And once I did that, whether they, whether they reciprocated or not, it didn't matter. But the fact is they did reciprocate and they became my mentors. So it's, it's a very important lesson in finding mentors. You don't, you got, you got to be out there looking. And then the other piece that you said about, um, you know, the, the, the pain of not knowing where to go for help. I always say, if you're the smartest person in the room, you're in the wrong room. So the idea of being in mastermind groups of being in groups where, I mean, I, I look in my mastermind group, I'm not the smartest guy in the room, but I'm pretty smart. But then when I go to other mastermind groups that I pay to be in, I'm, I am in, in some of them, I feel like I'm the dumbest guy in the room because I'm learning. So being a teacher and a, and a student all the time and, and going back and forth between those two things are so important. So it's a, it was a good, those good lessons for us. You know, when I, I we... totally, totally agree. I think, uh, you know, I'm a lifelong learner and a person who isn't. So what, what I learned from one of my early bosses was like, we are lifelong learners. And as soon as you stop, you know, it's like, if you don't grow, you die. Yes, yes. And um, that was something that I really took to heart, especially in, in sales, high ticket sales over the phone, where it's not always comfortable. <laughs> so yes, yes. If you don't grow, you die. And that, that, that has like a, a truth for me. So I always yeah. say like, it's not a comfort zone, it's a death zone. So you might hurry to get out of it. Absolutely, absolutely. Love it, love it. So did you know all, well, when, when you started that list building and you, you got familiar and you got really good with that, was it always the way that you were pretty confident in what you did or was you know, it like a process? Yeah, I think, you know, I started realizing that, you know, that the, that if you if, fast forward to my, my book and, and stuff that I ended up writing about and, you know, I think the list, when you're talking about marketing, you know, there's basically, you know, to, to, to simplify it a little bit, there are basically three elements that are the, the, the key to every campaign or every, every promotion. Now, I was, this is like I was in direct mail, but it applies to the internet too. And it was list, offer, copy. And there was something that I read early on that said the, the success of a campaign is 40% list, 40% offer, 20% creative or copy. And I thought about it and I said, wow, that means that copy is half as important. And then as I got involved in marketing and I realized, and so I, I did have some confidence in trying to figure this out, but I wasn't, it wasn't like, I wasn't in, in a dark forest, but I was, I was like, you know, just examining. And I was on an inquiry that was very, very important. And what I realized that what that, 40 40 20 formula says is not that the creative is half as important but if you have the best creative but your list is not uh targeted enough and your offer is mediocre you're not going to make any sales that's a zero but the opposite if you have a perfect list like people who are absolutely you know wedded to your product or people are doing an affiliate deal and they that you know that those people are, can buy and you have a decent offer, and your copy is just, you know, mundane or not, you know, not great, you're going to make some money. You're going to make, you're going to get orders. Now, the key is, so it's not half as important, but it's the last thing to worry about. But then worry about it. You know, make sure that you give the best creative approach once you have your list and your offer dialed in, and that's how you get big, big breakthroughs. And... I actually changed the 40-40-20 rule to the 41-39-20 rule so that the 41% was the list. Because every copywriter that on the creative side that I talk to, they know it's the list too. Like they know that they can't write to an audience that's not interested in the product. So 
it's I, I'm oversimplifying a little bit to make my point, but the list is the most important thing. But it's not that not at the expense of creative and not at the expense of a killer offer. But you've got to get the list dialed in. You've got to get it segmented. You've got to get it, you know, dot so that you can write copy to that list and to the different list segments. So I think as I went, you know, I was early in my career. I, I didn't have, I had confidence that I could learn this, but I was, you know, I was kind of like looking at it and like, where is this going? And, and fast forward to sometime in the last few years, I went on the internet and I looked up the 40-40-20 rule because I was writing about it in a blog. And I found something that said the 40-40-20 rule is dead. And the new rule is 25, 25, 25, 25. And I'm thinking, oh, that doesn't make sense. So I, I, I looked at it. So they said 25% list, 25% offer, 25% um, copy, creative, and 25% technology. And I'm like, no, that's not right. Technology is a, is a, a means of, of, of working everything. But it's not equal to the list and the offer and the copy. So I, I, then I found a quote from Bill Birnbach, who is one of the original madmen of the 1960s in advertising. And I think I have the quote in my book, and it, it's something like, um, never adapt your technique, ne never adapt your idea to the technique, adapt, your, adapt the technique to the idea. So get an idea, get a concept, get what you want to do, and then work the technology and work all the... The, the whiz bang to get it out there. Is yeah. it Facebook? Is it direct mail? Is it TV? Is it radio? It doesn't, you know, that's the medium, but you got to get the message and you got to get the list. But the list was the most important. And when I realized that I was now in the list part of the business and that it was the most important, you know, and again, I was not objective at that point. I was, you know, really showing that, you know, this is the area I was an expert in. But it really is the most important. Starting from the audience is so important. And that's really how you connect. I mean, heart sells. You know, if you don't connect with your audience, no creative and no offer is, is going to help you. Yep. And you've got to really I, connect. Totally agree. So what, what advice could you maybe give? So for people listening that might be solopreneurs, coaches, healers, and, you know, having the idea that, first of all, a list is like, that's the asset, right? It that's, is. That's what they need to collect. It's not enough to just show up on Facebook and make an offer because they don't own that traffic. Right. right? They'll have to be on your list. So yeah, getting, getting an email list is, is key at this point. In, yeah. In, yes. Do, do you have, like, looking back all of those 40 years of experience, like, what could you give somebody who who might be in their early days as an entrepreneur, maybe they only have like a hundred or maybe only 10, like their mom, their grandma, their cat. Uh, right. <laughs> like what's, what's a good way to start and to, to take that serious, but also to connect in such a way that when they make an offer, they will have that impact and will see that their things sell because they have the right people. Yeah. So I, I think what, what a lot of uh, young entrepreneurs, they, 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 don't, they don't have a list or they have a small list. And small lists can be very mighty. They can, you know, it's, it's, it's really the quality over the quantity. And yet they feel that they have to get a bigger list to, to uh, you know, they have to scrape Facebook likes and they have to grab as many people as possible. But you're, gonna, you're not going to grab people that you're going to be able to connect with. And so I think for me, in a, and I, I'm, I'm in a B2B market now, not a B2C. When I was in business to consumer, you know, you, you do mailings with a free offer and you get a lot of names. And you can do that now too. But, and and I, I'll get people on my list for a lot of free information. But I think that you have to really take your time. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a painstaking uh, process. But just what we're doing right now, we're on a podcast. If, you know, some people might have already stopped listening because they don't want to hear what I have to say. But if they're interested, they're in this conversation with us. And at the end of this, I'm going to give them a place to go where they can get a lot more of me if they want to go. And if they want to get a lot more of me, they can go. They can get a lot of free content. And 
now you've got somebody who likes what you say, likes, likes what you do, and it doesn't have to be selling. It doesn't have to be, it can be all content. And that is a, but it takes time. You know, going on, I've been on hundreds of podcasts, I mean, in, in the last five years, and I, I never turn one down because I know that I'll get to an audience that I'll find a few people that will resonate with what I'm saying. Many won't, and that's fine. Um, and then they opt into my list, and then I'm going to keep delivering really good content. Um, and I'm, 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 I'm obsessed with it. I'm, it's one of my biggest things. So I think, you know, so podcasts is one, writing articles and putting your, you know, your opt-in or your, or your landing page in the, in the, in the article, um, you know, and that's online and offline. Um, I think you, you never want to give away an opportunity to share your wisdom with the world because, and, and hopefully be able, enable them to then come find you. Um, I think it's, it's like the best way to market. And you say, again, heart sells. So it's, it's not, you know, I get a name and then as soon as I get the name, I start selling them stuff. It's not, that's not, the, I mean, some people can do it. And I, I'm not, I'm, I'm a, I'm a guy who, been selling and marketing my whole life. That's not my first step. My first step is to, you know, get, it's sort of, here's, here's the analogy. So you're on a lake and you're fishing. And so you can take a, a pole and throw it in the water with, with bait on the, this is like a, the, the concept here is fishing without bait. So you throw a, a, a pole in the water with bait and some people will snap it up and you bring them in and you sell them. Another way to look at it is you bring, you know, the lake is all inclusive, as many people as you can put on your list, and then you just shine a light over the, over the lake constantly. And the light in this analogy is content. And you shine the light, shine the light, shine the light, and when they're ready, they will jump into the boat. So the fish jump into the boat without any bait. And when they jump into the boat, they're ready and I'm ready to, to serve them in some way. And, you know, I'm not trying to trick them. I'm not trying to, you know, make them think that, you know, you're going to jump into my boat and then, I'm, then I got you, you know. But I am going to sell you, like, educational materials, like the kinds of stuff that I've learned in my 40 years is available in books, in swipe files, which are, are, are you know, um, uh, like uh, uh, promotions from the past. Um, and, you know, I can, I can, I know that because I have the connections and you, you might not, I'm going to get you access to a lot more than you'll ever get access to. But, and, and everybody does it at their own speed and their own. And, and again, for me, that's congruent. I mean, I talk about congruent marketing. And to me, what's congruent for me is get, and so getting names on my list is very important, but not at all costs, you know? And the funny thing is, I've looked at my list over the last five years. So I started at, you know, nothing, or at least my email list was a couple of hundred people. Now it's about, I don't know, maybe 12,000, which is not huge. It's not, you know, but it's a good list. And I blog to them every week. And over the last, like, couple of years when I've done this, this methodology of, of shining the light, my open rates have gone up, which is, you know, which tells me that I'm doing something good. And whether they buy from me or not, I don't really care. Um, but a lot of them do. And I'm not selling like crazy. In fact, I always sell only in the PS of my blog so that the, the you know, I'm not saying what I'm doing is the best way because if certain people are selling more, they can, you know, you can turn it up or turn it down. You know, you can, you can, you know, and, and so what I always like to say is, you know, marketing isn't everything. It's the only thing. And yeah. therefore you, and, and you can, you can adjust the volume on that marketing messaging. And, but you have to accept the fact that marketing is not evil. You have to, you know, I said this to a bunch of, I spoke in Hungary uh, a couple of years ago, 
with Hungarian entrepreneurs. Now that's an oxymoron, but there, there just aren't a lot of them, but there's enough. And I had to like get them to understand that marketing is not evil, that taking money from people is not a bad thing if you do it congruent with who you are and what you want to share. And that's the message of my book, you know, that, you know, I'm going to teach you all the marketing and then you decide how intense you want to use, you know, and use the techniques. Yeah, so, how, how it is aligned to who you are and what. That's right. Doing. Congruent marketing. That's what yeah, I call it. Wonderful. Well, time just flies. I feel like I have so many questions, so I'm happy <laughs> okay. I have a second episode with you. <laughs> oh, good. But uh, let's, let's give people the opportunity to, to get the hands on your amazing book. Tell them where, where to Yeah, go. so it's, it's called Over Deliver, uh, Build a Business for a Lifetime, Playing the Long Game in Direct Marketing. And I'm really proud of it. I, you know, I don't, it's, not, it's not the be-all, end-all of all marketing books. It's, it's basically, um, but it, is, it does give you the basics of lists, of, of offers, of creative but not from a, a standpoint of, you know, I'm going to teach you how to write copy. I'm going to teach you, I teach, I teach a little bit about building lists, but, um, but it's a real, it's more of a strategic um, uh, overview of what I've done in marketing. And um, in the, um, uh, if you go to www.overdeliverbook.com, overdeliverbook.com, you'll go there. There's 11 amazing bonuses. Um, each one is huge. I mean, there's one that um, Jay Abraham, who wrote the forward for my book, who's a marketing icon, he um, supplied two of the 11. One is a course that um, how to get how to get to where you want to go. And it was a course that cost him like $200,000 to build. He's not selling it, but he gave it away digitally on the site. He also I also have 21 keynote speeches of Jay's on the site. Um, I've got from my, I did an event in 2014 called the Titans of Direct Response, and I had the best uh, marketers in the world um, at the event, and I have six of the 12 videos from that event uh, that are really, really valuable. Um, I've got a swipe file of 400 pages of fantastic mailing pieces and promotions going back to 1900, believe it or not. And it's, it's stuff that, you know, it's swipe and deploy. It's not stealing, but you, you know, you steal smart. You look at concepts. And so uh, anybody who's doing marketing today, having a great swipe file is really important. So I wanted to do that. There are a couple of PDFs of full books um, by Dick Benson and Gordon Grossman, which are books that you can't really get. And they're only available on the site. And they're two of the greatest books ever written about direct mail which it gives you a really good insight into marketing. And there's a swipe file from Dan Kennedy. Um, it's just an amazing site. So www.overdeliverbook.com. Um, you go there, it, it, follow the instructions, you go buy my book, and then you get these incredible bonuses. And it's, uh, it's an, I, think the, I think the offer over delivers, so your, your listeners can, can judge whether it does or not, but I think it does. Yeah, I, I, told, I, love the, I love the title. And, and that's why you are also on the show, because everything you do, you are giving first. Always. It's always the content piece. And then for somebody who desires to have more, they can make the decision to jump into your boat. That's right. right. To shine the light. So thank you so, so much for this episode. And I'm so excited that I get to talk to you some more. Oh, and great. Saying bye for now. Bye. I'm so excited that we had the conversation with Brian today and I'm so looking forward to our next conversation where we are talking how to market from your heart because as you know, heart sells. And I find it remarkable how Brian's path was carved, so to speak, by people, you know, putting him in certain positions and him discovering his gifts that he was able to give to the world. So I really hope that you got the idea that the better your marketing, the more it comes from that heartfelt place with the right intention, then there is nothing as evil marketing 
everything and you can really, really get your gifts into the world and serve as many people as you possibly can so that, you know, not only your business is thriving, but you support more people on this beautiful world. Thank you so, so much for tuning in. Please leave a review and a rating for Heart Sales Podcast on iTunes or Stitcher. Hop on over to christineschlonski.com slash podcast. Find the show notes, all the resources we're talking about, especially Brian's wonderful book, Over Deliver, where he over delivers. And really have fun. Enjoy the process and give the best you've got to your wonderful clients. Have a wonderful day wherever you are and I'm saying bye for now. Mm -hmm.